Um, so my talk is called Who Are Internet Filters For? Um, and it came out of a controversy on the internet a few months ago when somebody discovered a website called Kiddle. Um, you may remember Kiddle. It was, there was a lot of people talking about it. And Kiddle is a, a search engine for children. And in their FAQ, they say this. Since Kiddle results are either handpicked and checked by our editors or filtered by Google Safe Search, you know you get kid-oriented results without any explicit content. In case some bad words are present in a search query, our guard robot will block the search. If you wish to request additional keyboard blocking and so on and so on. Now, the problem with this is that bad words by Kiddle's definition included transgender, bisexual, child abuse. So imagine a young person who's questioning their gender identity, for example, and they try to find some information about it um, using Kiddle only to be reprimanded for using a bad word with this mean-looking robot. <laughs> so on the, on the LGBT-related sort of terms, there was some pushback, and Kittle changed their message to this rather defensive one. You have entered an LGBT-related search query. Please realize that while Kittle has nothing against the LGBT community, it's hard to guarantee the safety of all the search results for such queries. We recommend you talk to a parent about <laughs> such topics. <laughs> so, as I'm sure a lot of us know, if you are a young LGBT person, trying to talk to a parent about such topics can go poorly. <laughs> <laughs> In some cases, it can be like straight up dangerous. And it's even worse when you think about somebody that might be trying to search for what is child abuse. Now, I want to say here that Kiddle have since improved, and a recent search for bisexual um, and a recent search for transgender included actual search results. And they were mostly, they mostly seemed to be like aimed at bisexual or transgender parents coming out to their children, but th there were results, so they're, they're getting somewhere. Um, internet filtering is one of the most common features of systems that are designed to try to keep young people safe when they use the internet. A software that present, prevents um, uh, the user of a computer from accessing certain websites. And Kiddle is not an internet filter, but it has many of the same goals of sort of hiding certain parts of the internet from you. So, you know, a sim it's a similar sort of area. And internet filters, as well as websites like Kiddle and so on, are used when someone who is responsible for young people wants to pr protect them from people or content on the internet they don't think is suitable for them. But even with good intentions and with the best interests of children in mind, in my opinion, Internet filtering and similar software does more harm than good. My secondary school had two levels, or I guess it probably still has, two levels of internet filtering. It had 
um, an internet filter that applied to students and an internet filter that applied to teachers. So there were sometimes things that teachers wanted to use to teach lessons that they couldn't access and had to come up with different lessons or kind of improvise on the spot when they hadn't tested that it didn't work or try and bring it in from home somehow. And so they couldn't deliver the lesson they wanted to because of assumptions made by the people who made this software or the people who set it up that turned out not to be correct. But it was even worse when something was blocked on the student filter, but not the teacher one. An example of this is that YouTube was blocked. And YouTube has a lot of educational content on it. A lot of teachers like to use YouTube content. And this meant that if, student, if a teacher wanted students to be able to go off and sort of find content on their own, and they came across a YouTube video, the teacher had to log into, their com log into the computer and basically give, give the students access to their account. And that's, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> because if a student turned out to be malicious, they could impersonate the teacher. They could access personal information about other students. And this could lead to pretty serious legal consequences for everybody involved. <laughs> When I was in primary school, we also had an internet filter. I remember a friend of mine had just broken some regional sporting record for his age range. And this was listed on a website of the sort of regional sporting thing. They had like profiles of all of the, the members of the, of the league or whatever. And he wanted to show us his time on this website, and show it to his friends and to the teacher. But when he filled in the form on the website to like narrow down the profiles and find his own, the filter stopped him going any further, because suddenly the URL had this in it. <laughs> um, so the URL said sex equals n, and because the URL contained the word sex, it was automatically blocked. And my friend was left embarrassed in front of his friends and the teacher when he was warned by the message from the internet filtering software against accessing pornographic or obscene content. <laughs> um, this, this problem is quite prevalent in internet filtering. It's called the Scunthorpe problem because of uh, a term inside the word Scunthorpe. And in several <laughs> occasions, um, since the internet became mainstream, residents of Scunthorpe, which is a town, I think, in England, um, have been prevented from doing various things online, like finding information about local events or signing up for an AOL account. <laughs> <laughs> and the Scunthorpe Problem article on Wikipedia has a huge list of incidents of similar, um, uh, of a similar problem where people have been banned from doing certain things because of either the name of where they live or because of their own name. But these filters aren't just in schools. Home computer internet fil filtering software has been around for a, a while. And it hasn't been particularly widespread or effective, especially as sort of more mobile devices have been coming into the home. They're seen as maybe more personal, and it's sort of generally harder to install filtering software on them as well. 
But recently, there have been moves to go way beyond that and to make the internet filtered by default. In the UK, all of the large home and mobile broadband service providers now have on by default internet filtering. And they have done for a couple of years. This was encouraged by Prime Minister David Cameron, who spun it as um, a way to stop young people having easy access to online pornography. Um, but shortly after these filters were introduced, they were found to block sex and relationships education, as well as support for victims of suicide, domestic abuse, um, discrimination, rape, addiction, and all sorts of other um, things that people might need support with. Only adults can remove the filters. Age validation is often performed by making a charge against a credit card. Now this excludes adults who are unable or unwilling to have a credit card for whatever reason. But it also potentially completely removes access to important resources from young people who have any parents but the ones who you're able to approach and say, hey mum, can you turn off the porn filter on my phone for me, please? <laughs> they, need to char or they need to charge your credit card. This type of, of child safety product is an application of the, the parenting mantra that says children should always be supervised while they're using the internet. But I think that's actively harmful to children because everybody has a right to privacy and trying to limit somebody's online activities by saying big brother is watching you isn't going to keep them safe. Because if you're doing that by filtering the internet at school, they'll wait until they're at home, where there's maybe no filter. If there's a filter at home, they'll wait until they're, some, they're somewhere else where there's no filter. And what that approach does is push the people from a su potentially supportive environment where they could talk to someone if something went wrong, like a school or home where they're with their parents, to somewhere where they're on their own or maybe even in some other dangerous situation that they've got into because they can't get at what they need from a safe place. So there's a lot of stuff about the internet that can be dangerous, but trying to pretend that you we can completely shield people from it, isn't going to make it go away. And it means that when somebody eventually does see something you don't want them to see through the shield, they're not going to know how to, how to handle it. We need to be educating young people on behaving responsibly online so that when inevitably they do come across something we'd rather they hadn't, they can handle it maturely. The relationship that exists between young people and their guardians has to be built on trust. And when you force a child to use an annoying, invasive internet filter, that's a clear indication that you don't trust them. And so why should they trust you when something goes wrong and they want to come and talk to someone about it and help them put it right again? So that's me. <laughs> <laughs>